So it's been just four short months since the Poco M3 Pro landed here in Blighty and already it's been succeeded by this big yellow bugger right here, the Poco M4 Pro 5G. Seriously, can we just stop with the 5G bit in like every smartphone name now? Because pretty much every smartphone has 5G. And it'd be a hell of a lot neater and easier just to put not 5G at the end of any phone that doesn't have it. But anywho, the Poco M4 Pro 5G appears to be a rebranded form of Xiaomi's Redmi Note 11, which just launched a week or so back, boasting a mighty 6.6 inch screen, Dimensity 810 smarts and a 50 megapixel main camera. And you've got quite a few upgrades packed into this thing versus the previous generation, including a stereo speaker setup, you've got a performance boost and some rejiggered camera tech. I don't know the official UK price as I'm shooting this video because I'm shooting it ahead of the actual UK launch, but shut up already, I hear you scream. Just get the Poco M4 Pro and out of its box. That's exactly what I'll do. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So if you purchase the Poco M4 Pro 5G, what will you find in the box besides, of course, the smartphone? Well, you've got yourself one 33 watt adapter, thrilling bit of USB action, protective condom case, always good to see those bundled in with the budget blowers, and the usual random selection of Poco stickers as well, so you can decorate your kids, pets, whatever. And that's it, not a bad little package overall. So the design of the Poco M4 Pro is basically what you would expect. You've got a plastic arse end around back. It comes in this power black colour, otherwise also cool blue or Poco yellow if you want something a bit more eye-poppingly in your face. We're not just talking attracting side glances as you walk down the street here. We are talking WTFs all over the place. It's a 6.6 inch smartphone and at almost 200 grams does have a bit of a heft to it, but nothing too cumbersome. And it's actually a reasonably skinny smartphone as well, helped along by the fact that that camera chassis doesn't really jut very far from the surface at all, so the phone doesn't rock about the place when it's laid down on its back and you're poking that screen. Hopefully that plastic rear end won't scratch up under duress, although at least you've got that condom case bundled in the box to keep it protected if you need to. And it's a matte finish here, not a glossy one, so at least it doesn't seem to be picking up much in the way of greasy prints. You'll probably just have to give it the occasional buffing to tidy it up a bit. Got some fairly obvious Poco branding as usual, although it's not quite as in your face as some previous models. And personally, I would definitely go for one of the brighter models, the Power Black. Not particularly exciting, has to be said, although a fairly neat and tidy finish at least. Then around front, that 6.6 inch display is protected by Gorilla Glass 3 quarter and also it's got a screen protector slapped on there. Pretty thick bezel surrounding that screen, but pretty standard for a budget smartphone at this sort of price point. And of course you've got your selfie cam, oop, f the selfie cam orifice uh, wadged away up top here. And the SIM tray situation, pretty respectable here on the Poco M4 Pro 5G as well. You've got space for two SIMs at once. Otherwise, alternatively, that second slot can be used for a micro SD memory card to expand the storage up to a further terabyte. Okay, so I've got the Poco M4 Pro 5G all set up, ready for action. And as you can see here, it's got a bit of Android 11 with MIUI 12.5.1, just squatting on top of there like a randy toad. And if you've seen one of my Xiaomi or Poco smartphone unboxings or reviews in the past, you'll have heard me bang on about MIUI to death basically and apologies I'm gonna bang on about it so more right now so you might want to skip ahead a section if you've already seen all this I think it's fair to say that reactions are rather mixed to MIUI in general I actually quite like MIUI 12 because the most stock version uh, of MIUI slash Android that we've had on a Xiaomi smartphone you've got the likes of the apps tray by default I really like that control center which adds all kinds of useful toggles or just a quick flick of the right hand side of the screen away and you do get some pretty decent bonus bits chucked in there as well, which are well worth getting on board with. So plenty of customization and personalization features in here. There's plenty of bonus bits like the game turbo feature packed on here as well, which I will cover later on in the performance and gaming section. The video toolbox is great for any YouTube fans, for instance, it allows you to take screenshots. You could play a video with just the sound, so the display uh, turned off, which is really good if you're enjoying a podcast, you want to conserve some battery life. You can mess with the audio output, all that good shiz. Of course, one of the problems with a um, MIUI is you never know when you're going to get an update to the latest version of Android. It might be several months from now that the Poco M4 Pro 5G finally gets a bit of Android 12 action. And also this Poco blower is weighed down by a horrendous amount of crapware that's shoved on here before you even get the thing booted up. Like seriously, this first line of the apps draw alone, four out of five of those apps are just crap that I just want gone from here. And thankfully that is pretty easy to do, uh, but it is just a ball it come to go through and get rid of each individual one. Yeah, good old tile fun. Back once again, that thing just never dies. One of these days I might actually try playing it and see just how much fun Tile Fun is. It's probably right up there with uh, getting kicked in the cock. 
As for the security side of things, where well, you've got an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor here on the side of the Poco M4 Pro 5G. A very narrow, sticky-out power button, as you can see there. Uh, but so far, touch with that fingerprint sensor seems very reliable, very accurate. Just a light tap of your fingertip against that uh, power button, and as you can see, straight in. Alternatively, you could also set up the Poco M4 Pro 5G so it unlocks when it recognizes your gorgeous mug. And this is normally pretty reliable as well, although not the most secure of methods. It usually works even when you're wearing a face mask, half your face is covered up. So yeah, if you take your security seriously, I'd say probably just stick with that fingerprint sensor. And there's no obvious gaps in the Poco M4 Pro 5G's feature set. You've got the likes of NFC for your contactless payments. And my review model comes packing 128 gigs of storage, uh, which, you know, a fair chunk is used up by the UI and all those various apps, but you can free up some of that quite easily. And then you've got that micro SD expandability. Now that display is a 6.6 inch IPS screen, so fairly standard stuff for this sort of budget price point. Not really any different to what you'll find on fellow Xiaomi and Oppo and Realme rivals around this price. It's full HD plus resolution, 2400 by 1080, so those visuals come through nice and crisp. Colours are respectably poppy for an IPS panel, not quite as vibrant and in your face as what you would get from an AMOLED, of course. The contrast isn't quite as sharp, but it's absolutely fine. Viewing angles are alright. And on that top brightness level, the Poco M4 Pro 5G ain't exactly going to see your eyeballs, but I could still see what I was doing when I was outdoors. You can tinker with the display settings if you dive into that MIUI menu, uh, to a small degree at least. You've got the likes of the reading mode, which can help to filter blue light. Although it is actually a reasonably warm uh, panel to begin with, but you can dive into that colour scheme as well and change up the colour output if you like. Make it cooler or just fully customise it to suit your own personal preferences. And the Poco M4 Pro 5G uh, does support 90Hz refresh rate as well, though it is stuck at 60Hz by default. There's no dynamic refresh rate there, as you can see. So if you want that extra bit of smoothness, then you'll definitely want to boost that up. And one of the upgrades for the Poco M4 Pro 5G versus the older Poco M3 Pro is the fact you've now got a stereo speaker setup of sorts here. So let's see if it's actually halfway decent. Really got to grips with them, so might pick up some of the best features you'll find in there, including a few that are sort of hidden away that you might not otherwise know about. Now, even though you do have that dedicated top speaker just housed here on the actual top edge of the phone, it is definitely a lot weaker than that bottom speaker. The output is definitely a lot fainter, a lot tinnier. So the peak volume, not particularly loud, uh, but you know, for this budget sort of price point, you'll struggle to find much better, to be honest. Personally, I'm a lot more happy to see that there's actually a headphone jack housed down below here on the Poco M4 Pro, and you've got full Bluetooth 5.1 support as well. Now, performance in the Poco M4 Pro is powered by the 6 nanometer MediaTek Dimensity 810 chipset, definitely an upgrade over the 700 series chip found on that M3 Pro. Here in my review sample, that's backed by 6 gigs of DDR4 RAM, and certainly everything seems pleasingly smooth so far. I also took the liberty of running a bit of Geekbench as well for any benchmarking fans, and respectable enough scores, quite low on the single core, 592, but the multi core score touching up towards those 2000s. So this phone should certainly be more than capable for all of your everyday shenanigans, but what about gaming? Well, let's test it on out with a good bit of tile fun. <laughs> nah, I'm just f***ing with you, we're gonna do a bit of Call of Duty, of course. So it's a pretty basic offering as far as the graphics quality and the frame rate go, as you can see, they max out at medium and high. All the same, I found that Call of Duty Mobile played absolutely fine on those settings, the frame rate stayed strong and stable, uh, and I did get my ass handed to me, as usual, but that's just standard. Ah, uh, tits. You've got 240 hertz touch sampling on that display as well, so every swipe and poke and frantic prod is instantly recognised and replicated. And those game turbo features that I mentioned before, you can drag out like so, and this gives you all kinds of different bonus modes that you can activate. You've got the likes of split screen multitasking, if for instance you're using a, uh, a voice chat app in the background, something like that. And this can be minimised like so, which is quite handy. You've also got a shag load of different screen record features. You've got the performance boost mode. This helps to free up some memory. All kinds of different stuff on here. Uh, some of the icons, like, good luck actually figuring out what they do, but once you get the hang of them, it's all good. And of course, there's the endlessly amusing voice changer feature. And of course, there's the endlessly amusing voice changer feature. And just in case you've been asleep for about 90% of this video, and by the way, no one's blaming you, yes, the Poco M4 Pro 5G does have 5G support. It's built into that Dimensity 810 chipset. Just a standard bit of sub 6, but it's always great to have at this sort of budget price point. Speaking of which, have you seen my uh, video about the best budget 5G smartphones you can grab yourself in 2021? It's rather 
bloody good if I do say so myself. It's on the battery front, 5,000 milliamp cell, uh, so again, fairly sort of standard sort of battery capacity at this budget price, uh, but should hopefully keep you going all day, no worries. Certainly the battery drain I've seen from it so far, nothing troublesome whatsoever. But stay tuned, I'm going to bring you a full Poco M4 Pro 5G review really shortly, uh, where I'll cover things like the battery life in full. And when you need to recharge, well, it's 33 watt wired charging, so we're getting pretty good for the cost, and you've got that 33 watt adapter bundled there in the box. Now let's finish up this Poco M4 Pro unboxing with a squint at the camera tech. What you've got here is a dual lens setup with a 50 megapixel main shooter and an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens. That's right, you heard correctly, there's no pointless macro lens or any other bollocks like that slapped here on the back end of the Poco M4. It's uh, it's a thing of beauty. I'm actually starting to well up a little bit. But the amazing difference of the hardware aside, the actual camera UI itself looks very, very familiar indeed. For anyone who's used a Poco or a Xiaomi smartphone recently, uh, you've got a whole bunch of different toggles and features to play around with, including a full-on AI mode. Tweaks your photos depending on what you're actually uh, taking a snap of, can automatically launch the likes of the portrait mode for you. Although I tend to keep that knocked off as I find the colours aren't quite as accurate. Obviously that might not bother everyone. You've also got the likes of the filters to play around with if you want to really change things up. And you'll find that when you snap away in this auto mode, you get 12.5 megapixel uh, photos by default but if you want that maxed out res you can do that in the more section we will also find the likes of the dedicated night mode you can change up the order of these as well so you can bring your favorite ones down here onto the main toolbar and of course i will be fully testing out the camera tech for my in-depth poco m4 pro 5g review but here's a couple of just quick sample ones just to keep you sated until then as you can see absolutely fine for yeah everyday shots as long as the lighting is all right if you're shooting indoors especially if you're shooting a moving subject you're going to be struggling and yeah that 8 megapixel Pixel ultra wide angle shooter, quite a basic effort uh, as you typically get at this sort of price point. So, fine for your pullback shots, but uh, don't expect super accurate color reproduction. And on the video front, well, if we just tap up here, you can see it shoots at full HD, 30 frames per second by default. You can bump it up to 60 frames per second if you want a smoother finish, but there's no 4K option. So, yeah, pretty basic hardware, should be fine for your simple shareable shots, and that's about it. Uh, around front, however, uh, Poco has actually boosted the megapixel count compared with the previous generation. It was just 8 megapixel pixels on the Poco M3. Now you've got a 16 megapixel selfie shooter. Yeah, this should be, again, fine as long as the lighting conditions are all right. should get perfectly respectable selfies to chuck up on the, the Facebooks or whatever. So there you have it. That in a nutshell is the fresh new Poco M4 Pro 5G budget-friendly smartphone, which is launching uh, right now. As I say, I'm going to slap the SIM in there, get you a full in-depth review soon. So going over the camera tech, the battery life, the everyday performance, all that good shiz. In the meantime, it'll be great to hear your own thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and do that notification as well for more on the latest and greatest tech if there's any comparisons you want to see me do with the poco m4 pro 5g definitely let me know that as well hopefully be able to get some of that hot side by side action on the go and have yourselves a bloody lovely rest of the week cheers everyone love you